Let's talk about this Ole Miss uh, defense. They have tried to bring in a number of transfers. They have tried to fortify this unit. Um, and they actually looked like they knew what they were doing in the first half against Louisville. Uh, since then, uh, not so great. SEC teams are rushing for 261 yards per game on them. Alabama ran it 50 times for 210 yards. Arkansas ran it 58 times for 350 yards. Tennessee ran it 50 times for 222 yards. In those three games, those teams ran for 10 touchdowns. Um, it is just a unit that is not doing a good job of getting stops at all. You can point to the fact they don't stop the run. You can point to the stop they don't the fact they don't stop the pass. You can point to the fact that they play too many plays, which they do, but none of it is very good. This is a, a week where TDP just has his feet up on the couch all week, just, just sleeping really good, knowing the Rebels get to have the Rebels on Saturday and that rush defense that you get to go against. Just exactly what you want to have for an offense that, that hasn't really run the ball to the level they have, but just kind of catching some stride here. This is one of the teams you want to run into, this Ole Miss Rebel rush defense. And uh, they run a ton of three-man front, which gives you a ton of rushing lanes. And, and it's perfect for the strategy that we kind of unlocked uh, against Kentucky and against Florida. And it gives you way more lanes to pull guys around. And that's what this offensive line just does a, a phenomenal job of. So going against this defense, uh, not a ton of guys who are world beaters, not a all, bunch of S all SEC, all American guys. Um, you got Chance Campbell, who has a bunch of tackles, Otis Reese, who has a bunch of tackles. But for the most part, it's guys that's really, like you said, trying to create a play, trying to make a play, trying to keep your offense out there for you to mess up, get a big holding call, and, and get there offense back on the field. So I think for us as an offense going into this game, just continue to do what you're doing last week. Run the crap out of the ball, and that'll give you a great chance to win this game. I mean, you look at the plays that they've allowed teams to run. Um, Alabama ran 77 plays to Ole Miss is just 63. Arkansas ran 93 plays to uh, Ole Miss is 70. Tennessee ran 79. Ole Miss ran 101 in that game. But <laughs> They're just they're out there so much, and, and part of that's because they don't get a lot of stops on third down, um, and part of it's because their offense goes fast as well. But I just don't know how much you can expect from an undermanned defense if you're Lane Kiffin to to hold teams that are that are running 84 plays a game in SEC play. That you're just that's a losing battle. It's an uphill battle, especially when you really look at the depths of some of these rosters, like at Mississippi State, at Ole Miss. It's a bunch of three and four star guys and. You keep those guys out there time and time again, play after play, drive after drive. Um, it gets to a point in the fourth quarter where you take their will. They're tired. They're exhausted. They haven't stopped you all day. And, and that's where you get big backs like TDP who can take over games. And so I think that's going to be our recipe for victory, um, trying to minimize the chance for Max to have risk and, and really just allow him to play his game. And that's the RPO game. I think he does a great job you know, uh, holding the ball in, finding guys on those short slant routes and things of that nature. I think that's going to be the style of this offense for the rest of the season. You know, Sam Williams is statistically Ole Miss's most productive pass rusher, um, but of his of his sacks, one versus Louisville, two against Austin P, one against Tulane. You look at the SEC games; did have one against Bama, two and a half against. Uh, I mean, uh, one he had one against Bama, one and a half against Tennessee. So that's a guy that LSU is going to have to deal with on the edge a little bit, but. I, I, I'm trying to be cautious in my optimism on LSU running the football all over, um, all over Ole Miss because I'm I'm certain that Arkansas has been a better running team than LSU this year. Alabama certainly more physical and better up front than LSU, and Tennessee has found their running game in the last couple of weeks and was able to get that going a little bit against Ole Miss. Now, obviously, you look back at what you saw from LSU on Saturday, and you would be you would be enticed to say that they'll just hand it off and gash them, but. <laughs> I guess I just need to see it again. Yeah, you definitely need to see it again. But I, like I said earlier in the show, I think you found a kind of a rotation of guys who can really get that run game going. And those were the guys who really weren't playing this year. You didn't see much Anthony Bradford here and there. You didn't see much Marlon Martinez. And those are the two guys they pulled a ton against Florida. And they were making hay on the second level, getting to those linebackers and really pushing them around and giving TDP just wide open rush lanes to run through. So I think you keep those guys out there. If you want to mix Cam Wire in there a little bit, let him kind of play some snaps uh, we found something. So you, you got to continue to let those guys play and continue to do what you've been doing because if we go out there and throw for 50, <laughs> throw 50 pass attempts, I will not be a happy camper. What do you make of Anthony Bradford's play? 
I think he's good, man. I think his natural position is guard. Uh, he can. He's a big, huge kid. You walk next to him, you can tell he does something athletic wise because he's just he's a stud, man. And uh, I think for him though, I think with the you know makeshift line we've had to create this year, uh, next year or maybe the end of this season, he's got to go back to his natural position and that's guard. And, and you get that big boy pulling around and hitting some of these 220 pound linebackers, he's going to be moving stuff. So. Uh, I, I think he'll, he'll be a player, and uh, Coach O believes in him as well, thinks he's going to be an NFL guy, and I wouldn't be shocked by that either. This is from Cody Worsham's Twitter account. If you're not following Cody, get in there. He gets some great stats from the film he watches and the, the analytics websites that he comes up with. Jack Mashburn, who a lot was made of coming into the uh, coming out of that game and his role as tight end, LSU rushing without Jack Mashburn on the field this year. They I realize numbers don't play great, but you'll get the gist. He's run it 130. They've run it without him on the field 136 times for four yards per carry. They average 0.8 yards before contact when he's not on the field. With him on the field, they've had they've run it 66 times, so a little bit less than half. 6.3 yards per carry compared to four. And 2.8 yards before contact. That is a full two yards more. <laughs> yeah of moving the ball down the field before contact with Mashburn on the field. Now, that's not uh, something we talked about a lot in August, is that Jack Mashburn was going to come in and <laughs> save the day on the yeah. offensive line yeah. as an H-back, an edge blocker, a tight end, however you want to phrase it. But unequivocally, he made a huge difference in the game on Saturday. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what we saw early on with Cole Taylor and Jack. We just knew those guys weren't going to be moving the world in the run game. That's just not their strong suit. And that's kind of what you saw to start the year. Um, just two guys in there who are really receiving tight ends and, and really not their cup of tea to, to push big SEC D linemen around. But you see uh, Mash Byrne, a former quarterback in high school, just coming into his role and, and, and sacrifices wearing the big neck bull ring on his neck, yep. uh, meaning business out there, wants to push people around. And, and that's exactly what he's been doing. So I, I see them continue to use him in the run game and, and probably if I'm Jake Peets in the crew, I'm, I'm trying to draw up a couple play action plays with him in the game because I know defenses are going to be uh, key in that, uh, seeing Mash Burn out there. Yeah, I have no idea if he can catch the football or not. Not a <laughs> clue on earth if he can catch the football, but he can get in there and mix it up a little bit. He's a high school quarterback, just a really, really solid athlete, which is really good. And I think one of the things that's gotten buried a little bit in this um, season for LSU because there's been some inconsistent play. There's no question about it. Um, Max has not been great all the time, but statistically – and he's doing some really good things. He's the second uh, fastest quarterback to 20 touchdown passes in a season. He's done it in seven games. Joe Burrow obviously did it in five, but second quickest ever behind that guy. That's pretty good. And and he started nine games. He's thrown three or more touchdown passes six times in that in those nine games. And as this is all coming from Michael Bonnet, sports information director over at LSU. You can follow him on Twitter at LSU Bonnet. He's the only quarterback in LSU history to beat a ranked Florida team in consecutive years. That's not that stuff's not ins insignificant. He's played pretty well. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I was so high on the start of the year. Um, especially just watching him in camp, just watching him, you know, throw those big jump balls to the receivers. I thought he was poised to really, you know, have a really great year. I think a lot of up and down play, a lot of makeshift line, uh, just really, you know, kind of missing on some deep balls he could have back. But for the most part, I think Max has done a good job out there dealing with what he's done. Uh, had to deal with, and uh, I think giving him a run game, I think you're really going to see Max really get comfortable back there and really be able to uh, run this offense at the level that it needs to be run at. But to, to grade him out, I think he, he's done well uh, given the situation.